Hi folks, let's make a sign. More importantly, let's show the workflow of going from Fusion 360 over to our new JD Squared Mad plasma table to cut this guy. Good news is I've got a CAD file. Bad news is I need a DXF, at least for now. I don't know that we have a post processor to go directly to the MAD machine. So we're gonna use their CAM, which I'm okay with for now, especially because, and we'll talk about this at the machine, but JD Squared has done a really superb job of giving us some really good plasma rules for how it handles corners and other stuff that's particular to uh, plasma machines making good cuts. So I'm fine with it. Problem is I do need a DXF to export. How do we do that? Sketch, create sketch. I'll pick the plane right here. Go to sketch, project, project. See how there's a little P there? You can also click P on your keyboard. I wanna project this and that. We've covered this in other Fusion Fridays in terms of what the purple means and how to deal with that. To show you though, if I click uh, the body's light bulb here to turn off the bodies, you can now more easily see I've got a sketch which has the two shapes I care about. It's actually one sketch, all the more convenient. Right click, save as DXF. That's all it is. Let's head over to sheet cam. I am both lazy and I like to work from my desk. So let's remote into our JD squared computer. This came with the machine. Never control the machine remotely, please. Never control the machine remotely, please. First thing we need to do is load up the tool library. File, import drawings, navigate to your DXF file. Plasma sign, open. That looks fine. Bottom left is our drawing position. Click OK. Oh, uh, OK, so overlapping outlines which have been removed. That's nice. It's upside down. Uh, it actually wouldn't hurt anything, but if you go down to the bottom right where it says zero degrees, I just highlight that. I can type 180. Should flip it. It did. Now to create our toolpath, go to the third one down on the left side of your screen, create a new jet cutting operation. Click that. Now this is really important. We need to pick the tool. And again, this is so awesome that JD Squared does all this. I can't, I do not miss having to plug all these settings in each time. I want the quality five, that's the best. 45 amp, quarter inch thick. We're cutting quarter inch plate. Other hugely important thing, we need to load the path rules. Usually it remembers this, but I think because we just opened a new tool library, it didn't remember it. I'll go to load. And these are, again, JD Squared gives these to you. What these do is what I was mentioning earlier. They set the feed rate overrides for corner diving, circles, etc. Click OK. Now I finally need to choose mad path rules right there. Here's where you would also be able to set your lead in, lead out settings. Click OK. We've got a tool path, uh, open paths were not offset. Yeah, I hope that's okay. Click on this little teal tool on the far right, that's simulation. You can hit pl start, not play. And it's gonna go through and you can watch it. We'll probably dry cut it real quick to make sure it looks all right. It's obviously gonna cut out the interior pockets first, you know, the inside of these certain letters that have closed areas, and then it'll go cut the profile. So the first icon on the top, run the post processor, click that, plasma sign, save. That created a file. So now I'll open up my MAD interface. I've already turned it on with the top left green button here and then I clicked home. So now what I need to do is this folder here. Click on the top left of your screen, click the folder. Plasma sign, open. We need to re-pick the materials, this happens to be already set up because I went through it a minute ago, but these will, are not set and they they should match what you did in sheet cam, but they don't, it's not intelligent enough to, to match them. So you need to do that, that's obviously important. Uh, the only other thing I have with that kind of a gripe is I wish we had a preview of the part. I do miss that, it was really nice to see. I'm actually half wondering if there is one and I just haven't found it yet. But now we're ready to go. Let's make some chips or sparks.
Let's fix our sign by moving these two closer together. Right click on our sketch, edit sketch, drag a box around the bottom one, right click, break link. This will turn it from purple to blue. We can now move it. So I'm going to select it all, right click, move or copy, and I've got the arrow here. So I can just drag it up. That's plenty close. Hit enter or click OK. Now I want it to lock it in place again. I don't want it to move by accident. So drag a box around it all and hit fix, unfix. That'll turn it green. Now I can stop sketch, right click, save as DXF. So that was really frustrating. The machine let me down. Uh, and this was, I'm sensitive to this because it's why I really didn't like our old plasma machine. I felt like it was too unreliable when we had an expensive plate down there and whether it would bind or the software would hang up or it would lose position or something would happen. And it's just frustrating. It was a hassle. It made me not want to use the machine. It's just not fun. And the JD Square has been great. I think we've cut about seven jobs on it so far. This is the first time I had that little hiccup. Um, I talked to them about it, and I think it, I'm not too worried about it yet. I want to make sure it doesn't happen again. It has something to do with the sensor thinking that there was like fluid up inside of it. So we cleaned it out, tried to override it. They've got an improvement coming, I think, which will help with that. It wasn't clear to me that that would have solved the problem today. I'll keep you guys posted on that, but so far, really happy with it. The edge quality is great. Using the software is great. Pulling in the feeds and speeds uh, makes me happy. The speed is great. Like really, overall, so far, uh, good. The only thing we goofed on here is the little S's. There was a little sheet cam spot that goofed and it shouldn't have pierced where it did. That's not my fault for the camming up wrong. So I had Jared drop in just a just a little bit of till, uh, TIG filler, and then I just used a uh, sanding disc pad, a flat disc on a angle grinder, and sanded it back down, and then a little bit of gun blue, and you can see it if you look from a certain angle, but really blends in pretty nicely, and in this case, the customer is gonna let it, I believe, hang, I don't know whether it's inside or outside, but near a fireplace, and some rust on it, it's a good thing, so it wasn't a problem at all. Hope you guys enjoyed, folks. See you soon.